Hello everyone and welcome to the video and today we're going to be doing a full guide on how to play Revenant. Uh, so this will be going over the basic tips as well as the advanced tips. Uh, so it will cover all ends of the spectrum depending on how good you are. This guide will help you uh, whether you're an advanced player or you know you're just trying to learn a new legend in Revenant. Uh, this guide is definitely going to be the perfect guide for you so I'm going to try to be as specific as possible and go very in depth with it. So uh, before we end the video I do want to say about 90% of you guys are not already subbed so if you can drop a sub it helps me out a ton. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I want to look at is just his kit. Obviously his passive is stalker. Uh, you crouch walk faster and you can climb walls higher. I think the, the distance at which you climb is twice as high as normal um, so you can climb a second story building. His L1, his tactical, is a silence where he throws a device that deals damage and disables enemies' abilities for 20 seconds. Very, very helpful, amazing ability. And his ultimate, obviously, is the death totem where you're able to put down the totem and you can push for free, basically, and uh, it takes you back to the totem with 50% health. So we're going to start with the passive. Uh, there's really not much that goes into the passive. Obviously, you crouch walk a little bit faster. Uh, this doesn't really help. It helps a little bit with crouch spamming, but not really. For the most part, you're... Uh, only really going to use this when like you're trying to rotate the zone if you're skeeving. I, I don't know. There's really not much use for it, but the more useful of the two is obviously the ability to climb. So uh, you want to keep this in the back of your mind because you are able to climb up incredibly high distances, as you can see. Um, you know, I could almost get up there if I was right here. I'd be able to reach it. So. You know, you're going to be able to climb second story buildings and get up from unique locations, especially if there's a person on the high ground. And you're going to be able to make a pretty cool play on that just because they're not going to be expecting you to climb up from a unique angle. So it's important to understand uh, climbing up from different and unique locations because it will definitely throw the enemy off because almost nobody expects a Revenant to be coming up from a location. Uh, especially in ranked games where most people are pretty aware of the map and you know places where they're safe and that's where Revenant's pretty awesome with his passive because no one's really safe because you can climb up you know most most of the time you can climb up unclimbable objects so the next thing I want to talk about is his tactical and his tactical is obviously the silence and this stops enemies from being able to use their abilities so there's actually multiple uses for the silence but um, you know, one of the main uses is stopping people from rotating and uh, just canceling out abilities in general. So it's important to know who you're actually silencing because uh, who you're silencing does matter. So there's obviously like a little, uh, little tier list, a little order in which you should be silencing certain legends because certain legends are a lot more beneficial to silence as opposed to others. For instance, Wraith. You know, a lot of times Wraith has that, here I'll show you. Um, you know, it takes a little while, that 1.5 seconds, and you can hear it. It's very, very audible. So if you're Revenant, you can hear that happening, and if you have a silence on deck, you can hit her with it, and now she's stuck. Because, you know, as everyone knows, this backup plan is her L1. So um, as she's hitting it, you can be very, very quick with it. You'll have to have amazing reaction time and be very on top of it. Um, and this is obviously more of an advanced tip, but if you can hear that, that, uh, that delay and you hear that Wraith charging up her L1, you want to hit her with it right then because then she's going to be out in the open. She's never going to expect it and you're just going to get a free kill on her. So it's very important to hit Gibraltar as well because when you hit a Gibraltar, you are going to be able to knock his arm shield down. And arm shield, as you guys know, has 50 damage reduction. So uh, it's very, very big deal being able to take out Gibby's arm shield, especially mid-fight. So another tip I have is obviously, if you're 1v1ing somebody, you can shoot and L1 at the same time. So it's no worries. You just want to do it. If you're if you're face to face with somebody, Sam fighting this guy, you know you want to just. It could possibly mess up your aim a little bit, but he's going to be silenced. It's going to be very, very distracting on his screen. Uh, it's going to light up very quickly, so it's going to mess up his aim as well. Uh, so it's definitely beneficial, and you get that extra 10 damage as well as the uh, ability to have him not be able to go anywhere, especially if he's Wraith or Gibraltar. You're going to have that edge during the fight. So definitely if you're in a 1v1 face-to-face -face with somebody, you know, just throw it at the ground by their feet, and you're going to see the results are actually insane. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the other uses of the L1. So obviously you can use them on doors. And this is a very effective strategy that a lot of people are using. Uh, so basically um, there's no doors in the firing range and that's very unfortunate. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but think of it almost like a caustic barrel. You know, say uh, we're going to go over here and say this is a door. All right, say that's a door. So if you throw it right at the door. So if he was to open the door, the enemy, 
the orb right here is also going to open if you hit the door with it. So just keep that in mind. It's going to swing open, but either way, if he comes out of that door, he's still going to be silenced. So it's just a way of stopping people from getting out. So, uh, you know, if the zone's about to come in and these people are holding down a building and you know they have to leave the building, you know, hit them L1 one door, L1 the other door, and now they have to come out while being silenced and it really throws a wrench in a lot of plans because a lot of people try rotating with Wraith and if the Wraith gets silenced or the Pathfinder gets silenced you know he won't have his grapple and it's very very important to realize that and just kind of be a step ahead of the other team because if you can stop them from rotating they're going to get beamed especially in ranked in late late game zones because it can be very very difficult to rotate when you don't have any of your abilities and your plan A is out the window because you got silenced so just keep in mind you know Silencing on rotations is incredibly, incredibly important because if you can get them uh, to have no abilities while they're moving, they're just going to be running out in the open and they're going to die. So uh, just keep that in mind. So the next thing I want to talk about is the use of trapping people behind cover. So obviously if there is a person behind this cover and you use the L1 like this, you can hit them on both sides of it. And now at this point, they're obviously going to be silenced. They're going to have nowhere to go. If it's a wider cover, you want to get both sides. You wouldn't need to get both sides if you were like this because obviously you would hit them with either one since it is a smaller cover. It's not very wide, but uh, for the most part, if you do that, the person is not going to have any means of getting out and then you could ape him. So, you know, that's very, very good for Gibraltar who might be waiting for his bubble. You know, he might dip behind cover after he gets lasered. He might be waiting for his bubble as well as Wraith. She might be waiting for L1 to finish charging. Uh, Pathfinder, Bangalore, they all have abilities and means of getting away. So if you let them, they're going to take advantage of it. So if you see someone dip behind cover, you know you, you lasered them pretty well. Just, just shoot it behind cover and try to hit them with it because nine times out of ten at that point they're looking for a way out so uh, just keep that in mind it's very good it does that little bit of extra damage and it could possibly be a difference maker so the next thing I want to talk about and this is very very situational but there is the ability to hide in your L1 so if you put it down it is very 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 bright and as you can tell here you know it can be difficult especially in the middle of fights people aren't always going to be looking for it you can hide in your L1 and this works for uh, for resing as well if you're getting a res, you know, uh, just kind of block off sight lines with it. Like I said, this is extremely situational. It's a little bit difficult to pull off, but say this was the res station, you know, you would do this on both sides, get the res or even do it right on top of you. And then that way your body is going to be concealed a little bit. Uh, so it's just a way of stopping people from being able to see you, uh, especially if you're being aimed at. And it does come in handy quite a lot. You'd be surprised. Uh, a lot of people use that method, especially the hiding one. That will literally save your life. So uh, just keep that in mind. You know, if, you're, if there's no way out, nowhere for you to go, you know, worst case scenario, your silence just comes back. You guys are losing the fight. Just silence the ground, and uh, you could just hide in it for a little bit. Could be that extra second that you need. So I think that's pretty much it for the L1. Like I said, I always, I always tend to forget things just because it's hard to pack everything into one video. So if I forgot anything about the L1, just comment it below. The best comment I will pin. So the next thing I want to talk about is the death protection. And the death protection just recently got uh, some changes. So obviously you guys know you put it down and you have infinite range. But there is a timer now and you want to be mindful of the timer. And uh, another thing I want to note about Revenant is that you should be carrying around Ultimate Accelerants, I would say one or two. Uh, they're very, very helpful, especially when you want to be Rev pushing every single fight. Basically, as Revenant, you know, if you have a Revenant on your team, you're going to want to be pushing every single fight. So one thing to note about the Totem is that where you press it, where you activate it, that does matter so as you can see here this little orb that was exactly where i was when i activated the totem uh so that is going to be ch that is going to so that's going to change uh depending on what side of the totem you're on you just want to make a little mental note of that and you want to use it correctly uh, as i'm going to show you here if i was fighting a team over there say I'm, I'm going to push a team over here and i'm putting the totem right back here so you always want to put the totem behind cover we'll talk about that in a minute um but Right here, you wouldn't want to, you know, activate it right here because then you'd be backwards to the enemies. So instead, you'd want to maybe do it like this. And then that way, when you come back, you know, you're going to be uh, more inclined to be able to run right back. Uh, or even put it behind cover like this if you are nervous that they might push you. Uh, that is also another method. But just be aware of where you're putting it because you could also, if you get sent back to the totem, you could get stuck behind it. I've seen that happen a few times. 
Uh, so one little small tip I have, I'm going into the smaller tips first, I don't know why, sorry about that, but uh, carry grenades. So you can, if you carry a thermite or a frag grenade or anything, you know, if you see your death protections running out, your 1 HP, you can hard reset yourself. So obviously if you throw a thermite on the ground, you're going to reset back to the totem. And this is a pretty effective strategy and I have used it a couple times while playing Revenant. It does tend to work if you're in a pinch, you can just reset yourself. You see your death protection is about to run out. Resetting yourself might be the only way that you actually live. Because face it, sometimes you'll be put in situations where your death protection is going to run out and you're far away from the totem and you don't want to be there. So just keep that in mind that if you have a grenade handy, you can reset yourself. I'll show you guys right here real quick. Um... You know, you just throw it at the ground, obviously, stand in it for a minute, and you will reset. So now I want to talk about placement of the totem, because this is very important. Uh, a lot of times in Ranked, you will find yourself getting pulled up on by an entire different team, and they will be sitting at your totem and camping it. So the totem obviously glows. It's very, very vibrant. It's very obvious, so you want to put it behind cover. You want to put it in a location where you know there's not going to be enemies coming from. Uh, I have used it one time in a choke point, and that is just the, the most terrible way to use it. Uh, we weren't really thinking about, you know, something like that. We were just trying to get the push done early, and it just so ended up that another team came. So that's always going to be the case if you put it in a bad spot. So you want to just be very, very mindful of where you put it. So uh, an example of a good location to put it would be something like, you know, in a corner like this. Very good. You grab it. You come out from behind the corner and say the team is like over here this gun rack we'll say that's the team you know you start fighting them whatever and you do you so say i get reset right here and i go back to the totem uh we're going to be away from everybody there's going to be no one from our back uh because it's in a unique angle but you don't want to put it in a in a location where you know that it's a popular rotation point so uh, if you're putting it in a choke point, like I said before, that's very, very bad. There's many choke points on World's Edge map, which is specifically uh, really, really bad because tons of people rotate through there. So if you're going to be putting it in dangerous areas, just be aware that you might get thirded. So basically, uh, the placement of the totem is going to be the most important thing, and it's going to be the one thing that most Revenant mains are going to mess up. So if you can perfect the placement of your totem, you're going to see many, many successful pushes with very, very low risk. So putting something here, putting a totem here, and then pushing a team over here is a good example of a great one because you don't want to get shot out. So putting it behind cover, very beneficial. However, if you're fighting a team right here and you put it in the open like this, this is a very, very terrible totem position. So you just want to avoid putting it in the open. You want to put it where nobody's going to be able to see it. So like I said, behind this wall and in a location where you are very, very unlikely to be shot in the back because it happens a lot. So the next thing I want to talk about is comboing. So I didn't talk about comboing in any of my other videos just because I didn't feel like it was important. Uh, but it is very, very important, especially with Revenant. Comboing is incredibly useful, especially with Wraith. Because you could either put the portal uh, going away from it. And I will show you this right now. I'll show you two examples. Um, but basically, I'm going to use right here. So we're going to put the portal. And we'll just, we'll just keep it short for now. Um, but you could either put the uh, the Revenant totem behind. So you could put it like here, and then that way when you come back from the totem, you can go right into the portal, and you're pretty much back in the fight immediately. And that's a good way of being aggressive while pushing, because uh, it can stop enemies from getting a res off or healing up, and it's a lot of valuable time. Or if you're scared, you might get pushed, and the, and the, and the Rev totem might be unsuccessful. You know, if you're a little bit nervous about that, put the totem at the uh, end of the portal and then that way when you come through it you can go backwards and you can heal up and you can get ready in case they might push and, and that's uh, basically like that's almost something you have to do beforehand you got to decide whether or not this is a good push whether it's going to be successful or not you just have to take your best guess and if you think that it's going to be a very difficult push and they send you guys back all three of you and you don't do any damage that's when putting the totem at the end of the portal is going to be more beneficial so just keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is using Revenant Totem on height. So this is a very, very effective way of using it. A lot of times you will have high ground and nobody wants to give up their high ground and that's where Revenant is perfect. So I'm going to hit these ultimate accelerants and I'm going to show you exactly why. Obviously, if you guys are on high ground and there's a team even a level below you. So a lot of times in ranked, 
Uh, players will be on multiple stories of the same building because there will be one building that's in the zone. And there will be, if it's a three-story building, there will be a team top, middle, and bottom. And that's where the Revenant Totem is so amazing because if you're on the top or even the middle or really anywhere, you can use that totem uh, like this. You, you know, you hit it. And then you drop down and, you know, you, you're you going to be able to get that free push on them. And if you can do it well, if you do it effectively and you get a knock, uh, which is very, very important. I'll get to that next. You will win the fight most of the time. It's very difficult to stop a ref team, especially when they're dropping directly onto you. Uh, it's just very, very difficult. And overall, even if you get sent back, you still have your high ground. So it's literally a win-win scenario. You damage the enemies below you. You're really crippling them. And it's very, very important to use totem like this. Uh, it's definitely one of the better ways of using it. So the next way I want to talk about, and this is for your entire team, you want to call things out. So this is probably your job as Revenant. You want to make sure that your entire team is targeting one guy. Because whereas damage is important with Revenant, the most important thing you need to do is get a knock. Because obviously enemies can heal. It takes a little bit to get back. So if you're going to be using totem... You want to focus one guy, so you want to go in, just beam, absolutely beam somebody as, as quick as you can, and then call it out. Say Wraith 1 HP, and that way your teammates will be able to focus the Wraith. So getting a knock is your primary objective when you are using Revenant's Totem, because if you can get that knock, then you're going to change the fight. It's basically a free win, because then you guys come back all with full health, full shield, and you're able to just dumpster this team. So that's another thing I want to talk about. Um, it's rare that you're going to be full health when you're coming back and fighting because you don't want to heal. Especially when you have a knock, every second, every second is precious. So when you put down the totem, you know, when you're pushing in and you and say you get sent back, but you got a knock on their team. So it's now a 2v3. Everyone on your team is sent back. Don't bother healing. You want to push immediately. You want to keep your, your boot on their neck. You want to keep the pressure on. You want to make sure they can't get the res. You want to make sure they can't heal. Because all of the damage that you did to them is much more valuable than the damage that they did to you guys. So don't worry about hitting a med kit before. It's just wasting time. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I pretty much went over uh, everything you need to know about Revenant. A full guide. How to use them from all the way from the basics to the advanced tips. So this guide will help you if you follow these tips. You will see yourself improve uh, majorly as a Revenant main. And this guide will definitely 100% help you if you use it effectively. But that's pretty much it for today's video, so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.